Hey folks and welcome to another video of mine. If you're new to my channel, then first of all, a big, big welcome and thank you so much for watching. Well, today's video is going to be all about the Samsung Crystal UHD 4K televisions, the 2021 models and the AU9070 in particular. Now, in case you haven't already seen my unboxing video and my initial impressions video, then I'm going to be putting up the link of that video somewhere here and you can just click on that link and you'll be led straight away to that video do check it out and uh, today's video is going to be a lengthy one because i'm going to cover as many aspects as i can of the au9070 so that you get to know this tv through and through and um, that would perhaps help you making an informed decision whether this tv is for you or whether it's not so with that said grab your popcorn and get ready for a lengthy video because this is going to be a detailed review of the Samsung Crystal UHD AU9070. Let's get started, folks. Let's take it from the top. The first thing that I want to talk about is the TV's boot time. So let's quickly turn it off and then turn it back on. And let's see how long it takes for that to happen. So click on the power button again and there you have it. It is almost instant but you must be thinking hey all android tvs also you know once they have loaded up completely when you hit that power button and it turns off it hardly takes time to come back on but what i am going to do is i'm going to turn it off from the main switch so my main switch is right there i'm going to turn off the main switch all right so the main switch is now turned off i'm going to count till three three two one turning the main switch back on and now i'm going to hit that power button again So I just want to show you how long it takes for the TV to load up and bam, there you have it. It hardly took a few seconds. Normally with Android TVs, irrespective of how much internal memory and the storage it has, like even a television that I've seen with two gigabytes and 16 gigabytes worth of RAM, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds to load. But this was almost instant, even after I turned it off from the main switch. So that's how fast the booting time is and I just wanted to make sure that I uh, make a special point and give Samsung brownie points for how quick and snappy they've made their boot time. Let's move over to the next point now. The next point that I want to talk about is the interface and the operating system. Now this does not have your Android operating system, rather it has Samsung's proprietary Tizen operating system running on its TV. Now this operating system right from the boot time as you may have noticed is very fast even the moving around the apps is very very snappy it's got a very nice animation it's got a nice feel to it the um, you could say the interface is nicely designed and um, your move from one app or one place to another is rather seamless there are a lot of things that you can do it's been designed really well uh, to take um, full advantage of how a person would watch his or her television so you've got your settings, you've got your source, again, all designed in a way that navigation is extremely easy. You've got the SmartThings app, we're gonna talk about all of these you know, in detail. But I'm just giving you just a quick view of what the interface looks like. You've got your home button, you've even got your ambient mode, and then you have all these apps. And um, what it also has going for it is what they call a universal guide, all right? So if I just come over to home and uh, I come here, all right, this is like a curated content for you based on what you've been doing. But um, quite honestly, it has not followed my surfing pattern. So it's not really followed what I have looked for, except for Netflix, uh, probably. But apart from that, you know, all of the other things that I see here, I'm not interested in watching, you know, all these serials or all these, you know, lifestyle programs, etc. So I don't know on what basis it's curated that content and on what basis it's showing me that. But this is what the universal guide looks like. So that's your universal guide from Samsung. Apart from that, it's got all your usual suspects when it comes to the interface and the apps. You've got your YouTube, Netflix and Prime Video. By default, it comes pre-installed. You don't have Hotstar pre-installed, but you can install it from the App Store of Tizen. So all you got to do is just go over that app store, Tizen app store, and you have all the apps that you could perhaps think of. There you have it, Hotstar. Then you have Zfine, you have Sony Live, you have YouTube Kids, you have Spotify, you have Geo Cinema, Woot, 
Facebook, Yup TV, Ghana, Eros Now, All Balaji, even Apple Music, Hoi Choi. A full list of all the streaming apps that you could actually think of, it's already here. So in terms of apps, you would not be missing out on anything when it comes to Tizen OS. In case you're wondering, hey, it's not an Android TV OS, so I may not get the apps that I want. Well, think again, because Samsung's Tizen OS, it has you covered. It's literally got everything that you could think of when it comes to streaming. The other thing that I really like about it is these quick buttons on your remote control itself. So it's got dedicated buttons for Netflix, for Prime Video and Samsung TV+. I just want to show you how quickly you can actually move from one app to another. So I hit on Netflix, bam, and I'm in Netflix as soon as I hit that button. I hit Prime Video and I'm in Prime Video. Now generally my experience with the Prime Video app on Android TVs has been mediocre or below average, but here in this case, the Prime Video app works really good, I should say, much better than on Android TVs. Again, Netflix, bam, Prime Video, bam. Now, that's how fast it works. And really, kudos to Samsung and uh, the Tizen OS. It makes your uh, uh, navigational experience so good. And it's a very light operating system, and that's what I like about it. And uh, you would not be disappointed when it comes to the operating system or even the streaming apps. Now, if you are looking for games that you get on the Android App Store, well, you're not going to get those here. So if you are a person who likes gaming on your Android TV, this is not the TV for you. Generally, I don't game uh, on um, my Android TV or the uh, games from the Android App Store. If I have to game, I connect it either to my PS4 or my Xbox One and I game through those consoles. But um, Speaking of the operating system, the operating system is fantastic, very fast, very snappy. You will not be disappointed. Let's move over to the next point now. The next point that I want to talk about is the connectivity. Now, connectivity in terms of the ports and also the internet. As far as the internet goes, it comes with dual band Wi-Fi. That means that you have both 2.4 gigahertz of Wi-Fi and also the 5 gigahertz of Wi-Fi. And I just want to quickly show you that if I go over to the general settings, and if I go over to network and I go over to open network settings, well, it shows me all the options that I have. And here is all the networks that it shows is available. And again, I would like to tell you that it's got both 5 gigahertz compatibility and even 2.4 gigahertz compatibility. So in terms of the internet connectivity, this TV has got you covered. Now, in terms of the ports also, it's quite decent, I should say, because as far as ports go, it's got two USB ports. It's got three HDMI ports. So three HDMI ports, again, two USB ports. And when it comes to the HDMI ports, they are 2.0, not 2.1. I just want to make sure I clarify that the HDMI is 2.0 and not 2.1. It does come with one eARC uh, HDMI. So in case you want to hook it up to a sound system, you can do it through the eARC. It also has your optical um, uh, cable um, support. So it, you've got a port for that. So in case you want to hook it up through an optical cable to a sound system, you can do that as well. So in terms of ports, you will not be disappointed. And um, speaking of the USB or going back to the USB, well, you can hook up your hard drive to it. You can hook up a pen drive to it and you can watch anything that you want here. I'm just going to show you just a few of um, you know the video clips and I've tested this out but I'm not going to be able to play those uh, videos for copyright issues, but I can play some of the video clips. Now, let me tell you that all formats, um, at least, you know, the formats that I have tried work on it. I've tried uh, MP4, I've tried MKV format, I've tried .mov and they all work. I've even tried um, .h265 and .h264, both work. But let me just show you, I'm playing this video now from my hard or rather pen drive. So this video is getting played from the pen drive. I'm just gonna mute it now. And as you can see, there are no lags, no glitches, nothing. It works absolutely fine. And this video is running from my pen drive. So in terms of ports, in terms of connectivity, it's got you covered there as well. Let's move over to the next point, which is your panel lighting and the picture quality, which is perhaps the most important point in any TV buying video. 
all right or videos related to televisions so let's start with the panel first now i'm just going to start this gray uniformity test so it gives you an idea of the panel well yes there is a video running and as you can see the blacks are so good that it completely mixes with the panels i mean you won't be able to understand i've said this in my previous video as well that this is a glossy panel all right so this is um a uh, reflective panel and you can see me in the reflection but i'm just going to do a gray uniformity test just so that you understand how the lighting works now this is a tv which has your edge lit lighting all right so it's not direct led or it's not a full array led tv it's um, uh, an edge lit led tv so the lights generally come from your edges but even though it comes from the edges as you can see it's just so good i mean you don't have any you could say um uh dirtiness or uh, this um light being um spread around in a very um, uneven way i mean it's it's really good for an edge lit television and as you can see the lighting is really uniform generally cameras are not able to do it justice by the way guys so just letting you know sometimes on cameras especially mobile cameras um it may seem like you have backlight bleed but trust me uh through your naked eyes you will not find any kind of a backlight bleed so even though this is an edge lit tv as you can see the panel is really good the edge lit lighting is really good the black levels are fantastic and i'm just going to show you one sample video a little later on as well as you can see the values at the bottom they're changing and we have gone from 0% over to 80% now while we were talking and it just gives you an idea of the um, gray uniformity of this television now let's let's just you know make sure that we cover full 100% of this spectrum and i'm just going to go over here and hopefully yeah that's your 100% so as you can see the panel is fantastic in terms of the gray uniformity we are also going to take a look at you know some blacks so let's take a look at your blacks okay now i also wanted to show you the black levels of this tv now trust me when i say this this tv is on and it's actually playing a video in the background that's how good the black levels are i was surprised because this is actually an edge lit tv but the black levels are absolutely fantastic now i understand you're seeing my reflection and i've told this many times i'm repeating myself over and over again probably that this is a reflective and a glossy panel but i just want to show you that there is a video running in the background by the way all right so there's a video it's not like the tv was off and let me just quickly shut off the light so that you get an understanding of how good this looks in a dark room hey google turn off all lights so there you have it i mean i'm going to shut this light off as well just to show you how good the blacks actually are and that's how good it is let me turn off in fact all the other lights as well just to give you an idea and there you have it it's a complete black screen now and the video is running as you can see it's not turned off so there is a video running in case you are wondering what's happening why is everything black well i'm here folks and uh, the video is most definitely running as you can see but that's how good the black levels actually are hey google turn on all lights so i've just switched the lights on again and uh, as you can see this is a fantastic panel in terms of the black levels you will not be disappointed okay i do want to talk about the motion and uh, i want to talk about the brightness levels of this television and i want to talk about the hdr content now of course i'm playing one of my videos because i don't want any copyright strikes on this video now as you can see the motion of this television let's start with that it is in fact one of the best motion smoothness that i've seen in televisions yes i am not uh, exaggerating here this definitely is one of those televisions where the motion smoothing is brilliant and uh, you have many options in your picture settings how you can control the motion smoothness and i'm just going to quickly show you that so in your settings you have an option of your different picture modes 
but you also have an option in the fine settings of controlling that motion. I'm going to place a comparison video as well, playing the same video and just showing you an example as to how it looks with your motion uh, smoothness turned high and uh, one without the motion smoothness. So to get the motion smoothness settings or MEMC settings, you have to go over to the picture clarity settings and in there, the picture clarity, I've just chosen custom because I'd like to set it uh, to um, a high level, that is 10. But in case you want to turn it off, you can turn it off as well. And it definitely has an impact on the picture quality and the motion smoothness. And like I said, I'm going to put up a video, a side by side comparison video so that you get an understanding of how good the um, motion smoothness on this TV really is. The other thing that I want to mention is that this is a bright panel. Yes, it gets as bright as around 350 nits. And I've always said in my videos that 350 nits is the bare minimum that you need to enjoy HDR content. Now, of course, if you have 400 to 450 nits, the brighter, the better. But 350 is still decent and it's way better than your Realme 4K television. And it's still much, much better than the OnePlus U1S. Now, the other thing that I do want to talk about is uh, the settings, you do have to move around and tweak around to get the best brightness levels on this TV. Now, one of the things that you should do is turn this LED clear motion off. Always turn it off. If you turn it on, trust me, the screen's gonna flicker. And um, I at least had more like a headache inducing impact. And I don't know if you have noticed this and whether the camera is capturing this properly, but the screen has kind of... Um, uh, the brightness that is at least has dimmed down a little bit so the brightness level definitely gets impacted when you select the LED clear motion on so let's go over to the settings again and let us turn it off I generally keep this off and like you know I don't know if you noticed again the brightness level look at the brightness level it changes instantly this is a much dimmer and a duller you, you could say, I don't even know whether that's the right word, I'm sorry. But the picture is definitely much dull, uh, much more, you know, I mean, dimmer, the backlight that is. And um, here, when you turn it off, the picture becomes brighter all of a sudden. So my recommendation or my suggestion would be to always turn the LED clear motion off. And also the noise reduction, I like to keep it off, but I turn the judder reduction, which is their MEMC, to 10. Now, in case you are watching movies, I would suggest uh, perhaps, you know, dial this down, maybe keep it at two or three, or you can even turn it off. But if you're watching sports content, if you're watching um, uh, content which has a lot of fast moving objects, then you should definitely turn it to 10 or so. And look at that smoothness. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to do justice to this, but that is really good motion smoothness. And um, the brightness levels, like I said, you know, you do have to tweak it. And some of the things that I can talk about, of course, this is not that video where I talk about the picture settings, but you have to move away from picture to get the best brightness levels. And you have to go to general settings and you have to go to power and energy saving. Now, as you can see, there's an option here which says brightness optimization. This automatically adjusts the picture brightness based on the ambient light level. Now, make sure that you turn it off. Because the moment you turn it on, what it does is it uh, has this uh, ambient or adaptive light feature. So the moment your lights go down or you know you turn it down, it will adapt to the surroundings and the uh, level of brightness will reduce. So please keep it off. Trust me when I say keep it off. Then keep all these options off like the brightness reduction reduce power consumption by adjusting brightness settings you see when i turned it on the brightness reduced so make sure that you turn it off motion lighting you turn this one also off well you have to tweak these settings to get the maximum brightness levels but once you have done that as you can see the picture quality is amazing the brightness levels, it does get as bright as 350 nits. Well, it's not the brightest, but hey, it's not bad for the price that you're paying for it. And HDR content is mind blowing. When I saw Shazam on Apple TV, and trust, trust me when I say this, it was amazing. It was fantastic. Your HDR will not disappoint you. And I just 
I don't know if I can do this, but let me show you an example of uh, Apple TV. I'm just going to move over to Shazam and uh, I won't be able to show you the video, but uh, perhaps I can just pause the screen and I can show you what I mean. You can check out the light content, although this TV, by the way, does not have micro dimming or local dimming. Um, but even without the micro or the local dimming, the light in some scenes, oops, let me pause this and let me rewind this a little bit so that I can just pause the screen. Hopefully I won't get a copyright strike here because of that. But let me just, okay, let me just show you this particular scene. Okay. Yeah, this is the scene, all right. So I don't know if you can see this in the video properly, but the light orb here that Zachary Levi is holding in his hands, I don't know if you can see that brightness and that is quite separate to the brightness in the other parts of the screen. Now it is unbelievable that they can actually achieve this in an edge lit TV. Now that's how good the, <laughs> the picture quality is and the camera will not be able to do it justice. I can't explain how good this looks, but the HDR in this TV, man, it's really good. <laughs> it is fantastic. And as you could see from the picture information here, it is running at 4K HDR. So for most of the uh, streaming platforms like Netflix, generally I've noticed that Netflix runs at 1080p Prime Video, actually, you can have um, 4K content running in HDR. And Hotstar also runs in 1080p, by the way. So I'm just letting you know, but even though it runs at 1080p, the upscaling of this television is so good that it makes the 1080p content look like 4K content. And um, I don't know if you noticed in the videos that I showed you as to how good this was, again, I'm just playing the same video again so that you just get an idea. The brightness, look at look at those lights, you know, flashing. And um, again, it's an edge lit TV, but it in no way makes you think or makes the TV look like it's edge lit. It's fantastic. The brightness levels, the black levels, the HDR content is fantastic. This TV does not have Dolby Vision, but it has support for HDR 10 plus, which is like Dolby Vision, by the way, because it is dynamic HDR, just like Dolby Vision is dynamic HDR. So HDR content, you will not be disappointed. The picture upscaling is very good. The panel lighting is very good. The black levels, superb brightness, decent for the price. The motion smoothness is mind blowing. It is superb, I would say. So this is as far as your picture quality goes, which is the most important thing in a television. And let me tell you again, look at those blacks, look at those blacks and look at the bright, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, white screens and you know, all the motion happening on the screen is just superb. I can go on and on and on about this, but this is how good the picture quality is. So you will not be disappointed there. Let's move over to some of the other aspects of this television, which are the features. Are they actually gimmicky or are they in fact um, good? So let's find that out about the TV. Let's move over to the next section. I know I took time with this guys and um, I took a lot of time in the picture section because it was important. It's a television. So we buy TVs because of the picture quality. And in case you're wondering why haven't I shown anything about gaming so far, then guys, I don't want to disappoint you, but I want to make a separate video about gaming because I don't know if you have noticed, I generally record my videos in 24 frames per second. So I just want to make sure I mention that because I intend to put out a gaming video, which is recorded in 60 frames per second and not in 24 frames per second. Okay. So I think only then it will be able to do justice to what I want to show you. So please stay subscribed to my channel and hit that bell icon. When I do put up that gaming video, you will get a notification about the same. I'm going to show you a little bit about gaming, but it's not going to be a detailed video. And since this is recorded in 24 frames per second, it's anyways not going to do justice. But look at those colors again. This is one good panel. In fact, a great panel for the price. 
So let's move over to the next section, which is the features now. Now, the sound section is a tricky one. I don't want to cover this in detail because this TV, well, it's not exactly great when it comes to the sound department, but there's one good thing, all right? It is Dolby Atmos compatible, so it will work with any speakers which have Dolby Atmos and you'll be able to enjoy Dolby Atmos. Number two, it has a feature called Q-Symphony, which means that it can sync up with any Samsung Q-Symphony soundbars or sound systems. Now, what Q-Symphony means is that while you have connected your sound to the Q-Symphony soundbar or to the sound system, the TV speaker is not muted. You still have volume coming from the TV as well. Now, what that allows you to do is it allows you to have this uh, kind of a surround sound and um, it makes more use of the TV speaker plus the soundbar. And that's why the Q-Symphony is a good feature to have. And this is compatible with any Q-Symphony soundbar or sound systems. And that's a big plus. So that's sound for you. Again, I have given a sound sample in my previous video. So if you want to check that out, please check out that video of the unboxing and the initial impressions. But the sound is a little underwhelming, but I can understand it's a 43 inch plus the form factor is very slim. So I guess that could be the reason as to, you know, why this sound is uh, teeny, <laughs> you could say. But hey, you can't expect much unless, you know, you have a dedicated sound bar at the bottom of the television. But it does an okay job. It does a decent job. So um, that's sound for you. Okay, now this section is all about the features. So this TV does come with MEMC in case you are wondering. MEMC is a feature that I love and a lot of people love it or hate it. I personally love it and this does come with MEMC. We have seen that in the Jutta reduction or Jutta settings. So we're not going to talk about it much. But apart from that, this television also has something called an ambient mode. So this is a mode where in case you are not watching your television and uh, you just want to make sure that there's something pretty going on in the background. So this is that mode. Now, normally Samsung has this particular mode, which is the ambient mode, which they call the ambient mode. Generally, they have this reserved for their QLED television lineup. So that means their more expensive TVs generally have this feature, but this feature is available on the AU9070. Now, please note that the AU9070 and the AU8000, these are the only two TVs from the AU series, which actually have the ambient mode. The AUE60, the AUE70, and the AU7500, and the AU7700. They do not have, they do not have the ambient mode. The AU8000 and the AU9070, this TV that you're seeing in this video, it has the ambient mode, which is like, in fact, it's just like the ambient mode on their QLED lineup. So with the ambient mode, what you can do is you can take a look at, you know, some of the artwork, you can change the artwork, you can, you have some things called cinema graph. So these are more like moving, um, you could say videos, and you can keep them as your wallpaper if you're not watching videos. It's very similar to your frame TV. In fact, there is some artwork as well. In case you want to put up some artwork, then you can put up some artwork as well. And they look so beautiful. And um, again, if you've got guests and this TV is placed in your living room or um, you have your friends, you know, visiting you, you know, you're just having a chit chat, but you have something pretty in the background. This looks like a picture frame, in fact. And again, look at the bezels. The bezels are so good. I mean, they're so slim that it looks like you're looking at or you're looking outside a window <laughs> in fact that's how good this is the camera just doesn't do justice to how good the picture quality is so that's your ambient mode lots to choose from you can change the background etc and through the smart things app you can even take a picture in case you have a wallpaper in the background you can take a picture of your wallpaper with your camera and then it seamlessly blends with your background. I mean, that's what the ambient mode does. So it's really good. I mean, I like it and it's always good to have a feature and the ability to turn it on or off. I've said this numerous times in my videos and this has that. Now, apart from that, what this TV also has going for it is something called a PC mode. 
All right, now with the PC mode, what this TV does is the input lag reduces, the response time reduces. In fact, this was one of the reasons why I bought this TV. It was for the PC mode because I intend to hook it up to a PC that I want to buy next year. Perhaps I want to buy a Mac mini. I want to upgrade from my current iMac or to a Mac mini next year. And that's why I plan to buy a TV which had very low response time or input lag. So in case you're wondering, why didn't I buy a monitor? Well, I also do a lot of gaming. That's why I didn't buy a monitor because um, a TV, I, I've used a monitor as well for gaming. Uh, but in my personal opinion, I think TVs have come a long way and the price point at which these TVs come at, the monitors just can't keep up. The monitors are way too expensive. If you want to buy a 4K monitor, it's going to be way too expensive. And especially with these features, well, Samsung also produces their smart monitors, the M7 lineup. And uh, it'd be interesting to you know compare this to the M7 lineup of monitors as well. But again, that's a 32 inch that comes at roughly around 36 or 38,000. You can get the AUE 70, which is a 4K TV and a 43 incher at that for around the same price. So you get my drift, right? I mean, it just makes more sense for you to go along with a TV, but this TV has something called a PC mode. What it also has, all right, is a browser. There's a dedicated browser here. So in case you wanna browse anything online, well, you can do that using a keyboard and a mouse. You can just connect a keyboard and a mouse to it, and you can just start browsing using the browser and you don't have to do anything i mean you don't have to hook it up to a pc this is a browser and it works really well i'm controlling this with my remote right now so it may not be the best option but in case you hook it up to a bluetooth mouse and a keyboard your experience is going to be like surfing on any computer i mean that's how this is so you've got a pc mode then you've got a browser well, this TV also has something called a tap to connect, by the way. All right. So if you've got a Samsung phone and it works with Samsung phones, where what you got to do is you got to tap the TV with your Samsung phone and you will be able to mirror your screen, your uh, mobile screen over to your television. Now, I don't have a Samsung phone lying around. So unfortunately, I won't be able to show you the tap to connect, but that is also a feature where you just tap gently and you start mirroring your phone's screen over to the television. Now, speaking of screen mirroring, let's talk about that as well. Because in case you have an Android phone or in case you have an iPhone, then connecting to the TV is seamless. And I'm gonna show you exactly that. By the way, I wanna mention especially that this TV does come along with your AirPlay. So it's got AirPlay 2. So in case you want to connect your laptop, which is your Mac machine, if you want to connect your iPad, or if you want to connect your iPhone, you can connect that using AirPlay. I'm just going to show you that very quickly in the next section. So oh, let's, let's show you the screen mirroring bit of it as well. Okay, so for the screen mirroring using an iPhone, the thing that I want to talk about is that for your airplay your airplay does not work with 5 gigahertz internet all right so i just want to make sure that i mention that very quickly your airplay does not work on 5 gigahertz it only works in 2.4 gigahertz so if you've got an iphone and if you have this tv connected to a 5 gigahertz internet and you want to screen mirror your iphone over to this and in case you're wondering why isn't it connecting is the tv faulty well it's not it just doesn't work with 5 gigahertz but i'm going to show you that my tv right now is on the 2.4 gigahertz internet so i'm going to quickly go over to the internet settings and uh, i'm going to show you that it's currently on the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi and i've got the same network on my phone as well so all you gotta have is your tv connected to a 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi and not a 5 gigahertz wi-fi all right so i'm just going to mention that very quickly and even on your phone you've got to be on the same network so now all i got to do is pull this down i click on screen mirroring i don't know if you can see this clearly and i have an option here all right and that option is to select the samsung au 9070 i click on that and bam it's that fast 
so now i have my phone and it works really seamlessly i don't know if you can see this but the experience is seamless it's really fast and that's how good screen mirroring is so screen mirroring is not an issue irrespective of whether you have an iphone or an android phone it's the same process you just pull down your screen and you go to screen mirroring and the moment i want to turn it off i just go over here and i turn it off now the same thing i can do even with my computer and i want to show you very quickly going over to my computer and uh, all you got to do is just make sure that your computer is also on the same wi-fi network so i'm just going to quickly shut down almost all my screens so that i can show you this and i'm going to turn it over to 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi and now the best part about this is you can connect your computer to your television wirelessly so you won't exactly have to connect it through an hdmi cable now on my computer i will have an option of screen mirroring over to my television and bam <laughs> again there you have it it's that good and right now it's connected wirelessly no wires at all all right no wires at all and that's the beauty that's one of the in fact one of the great things that i love about this tv in case i want to watch some content on my tv from my computer i can do that and i can turn it right back on as well so this is a fantastic feature to have which is airplay and with the airplay you can connect your um mac machines you know seamlessly with your television okay now i also want to talk about another uh feature of this which is your pc mode and um here you can see there's an option which says pc on tv so oops when i click on this i have an option of connecting a windows pc a mac pc or samsung dex and i can do this remotely by the way all right so if you have a samsung phone a high end samsung phone which supports samsung dex you can actually connect to the samsung dex from your mobile over to the television again wirelessly i've already shown you the mac connection wirelessly in case you want to connect to a remote pc a windows pc you can do that as well so you can connect to a pc with the installed easy connection to screen app and uh, it's it's a seamless uh, affair you could say there is also support for microsoft 365 so you can run all the microsoft 365 apps like excel uh, powerpoint your um, outlook all of that can run on this tv in fact if you have an account you can just go over to this browser you remember we saw that you know there is a browser on this and you can start using your microsoft office on the cloud with the tv so you don't even need a computer now you can access all your documents on the cloud from microsoft 365 which is on this television so all these features are also on their samsung smart monitor the m7 smart monitor and these are the same features that are available on this tv now these features by the way in case you're wondering they are also available on the aue 60 and the AUE 70 and similarly on AU 7500 AU 7700 and the AU 8000 as well so this PC mode or your web service and the ability to connect to Microsoft 365 via cloud is available on all the models that have been launched this year and it's a really great service to have in case you don't have a computer you can still access all your Microsoft Office files fantastic isn't it Okay now one of the things that uh, a lot of us have had fascination for is this uh, thing about smart devices like Google speakers like Nest or Amazon's Alexa now by the way this TV has an option of connecting to three different assistants yes you can connect to Bixby you can connect to Google assistant and you can connect to Amazon's Alexa currently i have connected it to Amazon's Alexa Now this is the remote here but in case I don't want to use the remote all right and I'm going to place the remote here just so that you know that I'm not using the remote now a lot of people have this fascination of controlling your TV with your voice first of all let me tell you I am not a fan of that it is just so tedious 
And in case you are wondering that there are so many TV manufacturers like Realme, 4K TV and OnePlus U1S who have um, Google Assistants, you know, inbuilt through far field microphones, you know, connected onto their, uh, what do you call it, the television. So they have a far field mic and you can control everything through your voice and you don't have to use the remote. Well, let me tell you that you can do that even with the Samsung TV. Let me show you an example. Hey Google, set Samsung TV volume to 40. There you have it. The volume is at 40. Hands are here, remote is here. Hey Google, set Samsung TV volume to 30. You see, this is what I don't like about using smart devices. Although, it's not just with this Samsung TV, it's with any TV, you know, which has your smart assistants built, built in. But let's try that again. Hey Google, turn Samsung TV volume to 20. Hands here, remote there, done. Hey Google, turn off Samsung TV. So you don't even have to use the remote, you can control it. So in case you know you have this fascination of doing that, which I'm not a fan of by the way, all right? I still like sticking with the remote, but in case you have a fascination for that, well, this TV can do that. You can control this TV hands-free. Hey Google, turn on Samsung TV. That's the problem. You see, this is not a problem with the TV. It's a problem with the Google Assistant. Let me try that again. Hey Google, turn on Samsung TV. Yep, you see that this time it worked. Now, you would find that issue with all Google assistants. It's not come to the stage where it's very intuitive yet and it's not as smart. So I'm still gonna stick to the good old remote and I'm still gonna use the remote. But in case you want to have that uh, feature where you you know wanna show off to your friends or you know to your family members, especially to your kid, well, you can do that. Well, by the way, let me also tell you that the remote has the ability to, um, you know, help you with your voice assistant as well. So in case you don't want to use your smart speaker or anything like that, you can just press this and it will open up the Google assistant. All right. So I'm just going to, oops, it just, again, I, I'm not a fan <laughs> is what I can say, but you have that option as well. And the beauty is that it's not just Google assistant like you have on Android TVs. Here you have Bixby, you have Alexa, and you have Google Assistant. So you have two bonuses, you could say, but um, that's fantastic to have. The other thing that I did wanna, since I do have the remote in hand, I do wanna talk about this since in my previous video when I was talking about the remote, I mentioned that you don't have a mute button. Well, I realized something. In case you wanna mute something, all you gotta do is press this volume button like this, and it will mute whatever content you're watching. So again, you press it and it mutes it. So you do have a mute button option through your remote. So that's great to have as well. In case you wanna control it through your voice, you can do that as well. Just ask Google to mute your TV and it will mute your television. So that's your smart, what do you call it, TV and your smart speaker kind of an integration. Speaking of smart, it has so many other things also going for it. Let's quickly take a look at, you know, these options that you see on screen sports preset and home workout speaking of sports preset and home workout well to some this may be a little gimmicky um it's your multi-view option by the way your multi-view features now what is this sports preset now it's nothing but for instance you know you uh, want to watch a game but at the same time you want to make sure that you're not missing out on any notifications on your mobile phone now you do need to have a samsung phone for you to be able to achieve this. So what you need to do is uh, you can connect your cable TV or whatever source it is that you're watching. All right, here you see, you know, it says Samsung TV plus or YouTube. So you can continue to watch that here and uh, you can have your mobile phone 
connected on the other side and again you do need a samsung phone to connect so what you can do is let's say you're watching ipl out here that's happening on this screen and you don't want to miss out on any notifications so you've got your mobile screen displayed here so this is basically a multi-view sports preset where you're watching a game and you're watching your mobile phone because your mobile phone is screen mirrored well um it's it's okay i mean it's a nice feature to have so you have this option the other option that you have is let's go back home and when it comes to multi-view the other option that you have is home workout now what exactly is this when you press on this it's again similar to your sports preset so what it does is let's say you're watching youtube here so you're watching a workout video here you can connect your mobile phone and have the camera facing towards you so you can see your form and how you are performing compared to the youtube video here and again you can change the size of the screen so in case you want to increase the size of the video and have yourself here in this corner well you can do that as well again a nifty feature to have especially good for people who like working out you would appreciate this so this is a multi view on your samsung tv okay so i do want to talk about samsung tv plus as well well you have many options here if you go over to samsung tv now this is not your cable tv all right so this is not your replacement for your satellite television i'm just gonna mute this sorry so this is not your replacement for satellite tv but it has some channels that you can watch i'm just gonna quickly over i mean move over to the channels section as well so here you have it and here you have many channels as you can see this is the list of channels so this is your samsung tv plus and you have a plethora of channels that you can watch i won't be able to play this for long but here you can see there's so many and all you need is just an internet connection that's it this is not your satellite tv i'm again mentioning that this is not your satellite tv but you have things like republic you have bharat you have uh, your 9xm or 9x music jalva etc etc so many things right here with the samsung tv and again a very good feature to have in case you don't have satellite tv connected at home you can take advantage of samsung tv plus and start streaming all the channels that are available through samsung tv plus of course the channels vary depending on which region you are in so for india the channels will be related to the content that you have in this geography and in case you are in some other part of the world like europe or um, let's say the americas then there would be content um, based on your region so that's samsung tv plus for you the last thing that i do want to mention is i have covered this in my unboxing video and my initial impressions video again the link is going to be up on the video so feel free to click on it and take a look at it but this tv comes along with a feature called id tv now with the id tv what you can do is you have a common interface card which goes right behind the tv all right which goes behind the tv and with that what you can do is you can connect to any satellite tvs using a cam card so you go over to airtel or you go over to dish and you ask them for a cam card and you slot it into that common interface now the benefit is that you can control your satellite tv with just this one remote all right you don't even need a set top box so you don't have ugly wires hanging from below the tv and you have a set top box kept here you don't need any of that with the id tv feature with the common interface the cam card slots into your common interface and your satellite tv your dish tv your airtel tv can run using this remote so it's all integrated in the tv and it's a good feature to have i think you know this is definitely good or great to have on this tv now the id tv option comes only in the au9070 the tv that you have here it does not come in au8000 it does not come in aue60 or aue70 so again if you want a detailed comparison um talking about the features that are available on this and not on the other televisions i'd be happy to make that video as well i have got a few requests like a couple of them but um, i'm looking forward to more requests so it becomes you know worth my time because like i always say i make these videos generally on the weekend i'm record recording this late on sunday night so i generally try to record my videos on the weekends because monday to almost saturday i work and uh, i 
don't generally get the time for it. So I would really appreciate if you could post in the comment section, letting me know about um, the request. If you do want me to make that comparison, I'd be happy to, but I'm looking forward to more requests coming through. So please keep talking through the comments section. And that's IDTV for you, and it's a good feature to have. Now, I know I'm not gonna be able to do justice to you know, I mean, the gaming section in this video, that's why I'm going to cover it in a separate video. But I did want to talk about gaming uh, very quickly. Now, it does have a gaming setting, a ded dedicated gaming settings. And you can go into that dedicated gaming settings by long pressing the play and pause button on the remote. So as you can see here, there are certain things like the FPS is 60 frames per second. The HDR currently is off. There is the variable refresh rate meter as well. So in case you have an Xbox Series S or Xbox Series X or a PC that you have connected to it, then you can have the variable refresh rate showing here, whether it's on or off. Now this TV also supports 120 Hertz and 1080p. So in case you wanna select that option on your Xbox, then you will see that it will display 119 or 120 FPS here. Now, apart from that, the gaming also has features like aspect ratios. So if you have a PC, you can choose from multiple aspect ratios. Right now, it says this feature is only available when it's connected to a PC because you can only have it on a PC, not on a PS4 or a Xbox. So you have a 16 by nine, you have a 21 by nine, and you even have a 32 by nine aspect ratio. So there are three different aspect ratios. There is the screen position. So when you change the aspect ratios, you can change the position of the screen as well. There's a dedicated, and I'll cover, you know, I mean, I won't be able to cover it because I don't have a PC. And then you have a dedicated game mode settings. So let's go over to the game mode settings. When you move over to the game mode settings, again, you have things like game motion plus settings, very similar to your picture clarity settings, all right? So here I have again set the judder to 10 and you have something called LED clear motion. Take my advice always turn it off otherwise it'll give you um, a very bad ghosting <laughs> or flickering effect and the backlighting also dims down so you would not want that so my advice please turn off the led clear motion at all times well that's it for the video today folks i know this was a lengthy video but i just wanted to make sure i cover each and every aspect of this television as much as i can now I know what you're thinking. I know that a dedicated gaming video is due and um, I wanted to make a separate video for that because it would not be fair for me to mingle or mix that with a detailed review of the television. It just wouldn't get its due. So I thought let's make a separate video for the gaming and that's coming on my channel very soon. So stay subscribed, hit that like, subscribe button and also hit that bell icon because as soon as I post that video, you will get a notification that I have done so. So do not miss that video. And um, I hope I've covered as many points as I could in this video. In case you feel I've missed out on some points, do let me know in the comment section. Keep talking to me if you want to know about this TV, what it can do. And uh, if you want to some, if you want to know something that is in particular about this television, feel free to reach out to me. And I'll be more than happy to respond back to your comments and let you know all about the Samsung AU9070. Now with that said, we come to the end of this video. That's a wrap for this one, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Until we meet again in the next one, this is me signing off. Take care, stay safe, and may God bless you all.